Hi guys, my name is Stephanie. I'm a canine psychologist from People and Dogs Sorted. And today I want to talk activity toys. Now I've been talking about activity toys a lot lately with the temperatures, what they've been. If you live anywhere near me and you know what I'm talking about, okay? I think the whole world is having issues with temperatures right now, either really high or really low. But no matter which way the temperature goes, it can cause problems for us getting out with our dogs. Some dogs respond better to, um, to heat. Some dogs respond better to cool temperatures. My boy manages the cold, no problem at all, but rack that temperature up and it's a big, big problem. So activity toys have become a really big thing for me lately, trying to encourage people to keep their dogs active and keep their minds busy, basically so they don't destroy your house. We're trying to keep our dogs busy. Okay, so I've been talking a lot about uh, activity toys and things that you can use. There's two big problems with that. One is you need to be able to have the money to afford to buy these toys. Two, the stores actually have to stock them. <laughs> I've had a lot of my clients coming to me and saying, Steph, I looked into buying these uh, in the place you told me to go and they haven't got any. That's because everybody's buying them. Uh, okay, so there's a problem here. Let's see if we can remedy it. In this video, I'm going to be talking about DIY dog activity toys. So before we go into creating our DIY uh, dog activity toys, little disclaimer, all dogs must be supervised using these toys at all times. I just have to say that so that you know I've said it, you will know whether or not you have a dog that is likely to pick up small pieces and eat them and swallow them, or whether or not you've got a dog that was more interested in the food and less interested in the plastic bits or whatever. But I just need to add that as a disclaimer that please, please, monitor your dogs while they're playing with these. Some of these are great activity toys that you can set up to play with your dog. It's nice to play with our dogs and being involved in those activities is a really nice way of boosting that relationship between you and your dog. So it's never gonna be a bad thing, but please supervise your dogs while they're using these toys. So this is the first puzzle toy that we're going to attempt to do a DIY version of. Uh, this one has a slider at the bottom and you can put treats into any of those three little sections there and the slider can cover whichever one you want to put the food in. The three at the top are removable entirely. So again, if your dog is a bit of a destroyer, you might want to just keep an eye on them in case they run off with any of the bits. Um, hopefully the dogs are going to be really intent on finding the food and they won't worry too much about the little plastic bits. But again, please be careful. Um, but this is the one that we're going to try and replicate. This one has big suckers on the bottom, which attaches it to a flat surface. Now, we're not going to be able to replicate that very well. So again, we're going to have to monitor our dogs so that they don't disappear off with the whole toy. Okay, activity toy number one requires you to have several of these plastic yogurt pots and a muffin tin. Here I have my muffin tin. Now I've had a look at my yogurt pots and my yogurt pots are quite big. So they're not going to fit uh, sort of down inside the muffin-y bits that I, want it, I wanted it to fit down inside, but they won't do that. So instead, what I'm going to do is flip it over and I'm going to use the reverse side of the muffin tin. So I'm going to put treats all the way along. I'm going to use quite a lot in this because Indy's never done this before. So he's never experienced me playing toys with a muffin tin and yogurt pots and hiding food in this way. So I'm going to try and make the incentive quite high for him to play with it so that we can get a good idea of what he's going to do. Um, it's just, it's all an experiment at this stage. I will also mention that uh, when I put the yogurt pots over the top, 
of these muffin tin sections, they do actually have a bit of a suction fit. So it's worth being aware of, just gently put them on so that your dog gets the idea of what they need to do. But actually, if you push them down, it does create a bit of suction, which means it will be ultimately more difficult for your dog to get the food out. Good boy. Good boy. Ready? Go. Get in. So the next toy that we're going to look at replicating is the snuffle mat. Now the snuffle mat is basically made up of lots and lots of bits of fabric that you can hide food in amongst the folds in the fabric. Uh, it's a lovely toy, especially for dogs that are a little bit unsure, a little bit anxious. Uh, these are fantastic little ways to get your dog sniffing things out using their primary sense to locate food. Um, push the, the fabric aside to be able to get in there and find those little treats. Activity toy number two is replicating a snuffle mat. And what you need is a large piece of fabric, a towel, a sheet, something that you can gather the fabric up and hide food inside this uh, to replicate a snuffle mat. Now it is relevant to the size of your dog. So if for, like me, you have a very large dog, the best thing to use is something bigger that you can gather up in various places to hide the food so they have to go through and find it. I will also mention that when it comes to stuff like this, dogs really love to kind of chew and go round it and nibble, okay? So I would recommend that you don't use anything that you're not prepared to lose. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to lay this sheet out on the floor. I'm going to gather it up so I'm, I'm kind of making it pretty random. We're gathering bits up and we're flattening out other bits. Uh, we're creating little pockets and ripples in the fabric so that we can hide food inside those bits. Um, and our dogs are going to be getting onto these. They're going to be using their feet, using their face and, and their nose to sort of push the fabric out the way. We might get a bit of poor action as well going on. We'll see how Indy takes to it. Again, I have never done this with him before because I have a snuffle mat. Uh, so this is completely new to him. He's not done this before. Good boy. 
So for argument's sake, let's say that you've got a muffin tin, but you don't have 12 yogurt pots to be able to put the yogurt pots over the top of the bits on the muffin tin. Whereas before we used the, um, the flip side of the muffin tin, if you use the dips in the muffin tin, you can put the treats in the holes and cover it with just about anything. So in this case, I have some tennis balls uh, and some other uh, rubber balls that I'm gonna put inside. And, uh, and we're gonna use yogurt pots and tennis balls and see what he likes the best. Now, Indy loves a tennis ball, so he might just grab one of these and run off. We'll see, we'll see. And we should probably do a flip side of this. So if you have the cups and you have the, the yogurt pots, but you don't have the muffin tin, then never fear because this is a great activity to do just as a standalone activity. Ultimately, activity toys can be made from almost anything, even right down to just a few plastic cups that you've got in the cupboard. You can literally ask your dog to find food or get a reward for doing a certain action. All of those training games and things like that are great ways of keeping your dog's mind busy, getting them focusing on something else, getting them to solve a problem. When you can be a source of your dog's fun, the sky's the limit. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's given you a little bit of an insight into how you can turn your normal household items into cool, fun activity toys for your dog. Please remember that disclaimer. Please remember to supervise your dog whenever they are using these kinds of toys. With any toys, it's always, it's always best. Better safe than sorry. With all that said, all that leaves me to do is to say a huge thank you to my PADS patrons. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I wouldn't be here without you. Um, if you're interested in becoming a PADS patron, please check the description box below for a link. Like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. You've no idea how much it helps my channel when you do that. I would be so, so appreciative to anybody and everybody who hits that subscribe button. Hit me a thumbs up if you like this kind of video and I'm more than happy to do some more. All that done, dusted. I'll see you guys again very soon.